I and the Father are one. Alhamdulillah, right? You know why I can say Alhamdulillah? You can't. Yes, I, yes, I. Not as a Muslim, bro. You can't say that. Why? It's God. All right, what's going on guys man we're over here having conversations as you know as we usually do uh got a friend out here man what's your name brother my name brother uh wasim king wasim wasim king wasim in the building and so he agreed to have a conversation with us today man and so uh you know we're just gonna get straight into we're gonna talk about the scriptures and stuff like that compare contrast now uh we was talking a little bit last well I, you and sean were talking a little bit last night uh about your views on the bible and and the Quran about Jesus and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Let me ask. Let me ask you. What do you think is the most? Uh, I guess the biggest difference between a Muslim and a Christian, and maybe a way that it can be solved or reconciled. Well, I really feel like everything about religion is equal from the Bible because the Bible is the first book of God. Period. It's the Old Testament, the New Testament. The book of Psalms that was revealed to David, and the last and final book is the Quran mm -hmm. that was revealed through the Prophet Muhammad. So I really feel like there's no difference in religion at all. Okay, so when you and you've read the Bible before? I read the Bible, but I read the Quran twice. But mm -hmm. I got the Torah. I'm reading the Torah right now. Good. So and so, all right. So we, we reading the Torah. Where are you at exactly? If you don't, um, if you remember Genesis anything, Genesis in Genesis third. Genesis chapter three? Genesis. Okay, so you're way in the beginning. That's good. So, well, man, I'm glad that you're actually reading the, the Torah because that's good. Here, here's something with me, like, because um, I, I read the Quran all the time. I do. I read the Quran all the time. I read my Bible all the time. And, um, and it's really just because I want to be able to have conversations with the Muslims and understand and everything like that. Uh, now, something important to me is when a prophet is claiming to be a prophet of God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? then he has to line up with what the previous scriptures are talking about. There hasn't been a prophet that came that contradicted uh, the, the, the prophet before him. And so with, when I'm reading in the Quran, I actually see a lot of discrepancies when it comes to Muhammad's message in the Quran. And then like, for example, Jesus's message in the gospel or the message in the Torah or the Psalms, I see a huge difference. Now, in your experience, have you seen any, like anything that's different theologically or, you know, where it's like, man, that, this is a whole different, different um, thing right here. Well, you had to show me in the Bible because mm -hmm. like I read the Quran front and back, but like yeah. I said, I have to read the Bible front and back, mm -hmm. but I haven't seen no, you know, uh, nothing like that okay. you know, in the Quran. Yeah. But I was going to ask you what verses in the surah that you was confused about or that confused you what sort what do you remember yeah what yeah, yeah 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 so it's um so you got chapter we can start with chapter 9 verse verse 30 in the quran yeah in the quran chapter 9 verse 30 and then uh i'll pull up a bible verse too i'll pull up so you're talking about um the repentance at taba al taba <laughs> yeah al taba and this is this is a this is one of the most powerful assurance because this doesn't start with Bismillah Rahman Rahim. That's interesting. This is the uh, repentance surah right here. Uh, you said 930. Yep, chapter 9, verse 30. <clears throat> and then so we'll, we'll pull that up and then compare it to a few things that Jesus, we'll do it like, we'll, we'll go on the same line of things and see what Jesus says in the gospel. So, you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, Bismillah man. The Jews say, Ezra is the son of Allah. And the Christians say, the Messiah is the son of Allah. That is their statement from their mouths. They imitate the saying of those who disbelieved before them. Mm. May Allah destroy them. How are they deluded? Deluded, right? So it talks about how... Um, forget what the Jews are saying, but uh, the Christians, because that's the important part for me. Mm -hmm. as, a, as the Christians, yes, we do say that the Messiah is the Son of God. Um, and, it, and this is saying that those who say that are imitating those who used to say things uh, that disbelieved in the past. Basically, right? about blasphemy? Yes, it's blasphemy. And that, you know, God's curse is on them, God is against you, mm -hmm. if you're saying that Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when we go into the gospel, we see that Je this is exactly what Jesus taught, yeah. right? So like here in the gospel right here for, if you want to go ahead and read that. That's, this is John chapter three, verse 16 to 18. Okay. Now, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. Right. So like that's a direct contrast between the two scriptures. You have where Jesus himself is saying that he is the son of God who was sent into the world to save the world and that whoever rejects him as the son is condemned. While here we have then 600 years later, the Quran coming and saying, whoever says that Jesus is the son of God is a blasphemer. God is against that person. They're deluded. They're a disbeliever. You know what I'm saying? So this, it's not even just like a little small little difference. This is theologically on the opposite of each other, yeah. right? Like if I'm saying Jesus is the son of God, yeah. in Allah's eyes, according to the Quran, I'm a disbeliever, a blasphemer, and he's against me. According to Jesus in the gospel, when I say he's the son of God, I'm saved. I'm redeemed and not condemned. Saying. I see what you're saying. Yes. So um, <clears throat> let me just tell you, let me break down what that is, right? Yeah, yeah, let me ask you a question. Have you ever read the Bible front and back? Yeah. Front and back? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because them is simple. So, all right. So to remind you, the Bible was here first. Yeah. The Quran is just a final revelation of everything right that's what that's what we that's think the claim, that's, what we yeah. that's what we believe so with um with that being said jesus what we believe is that jesus was a prophet you know what i'm saying yeah but now that i'm reading the the torah and the angel bro jesus was special right yeah he was the only sinless he was the only sinless yes. uh, prophet, prophet, right? Yes. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe Jesus was a prophet? Yeah. Uh, but, um, do a but, lot. But, just, but not just a prophet. We, we believe that he was a prophet and more. We, like, for example, him being the Messiah. Notice how no prophet is the Messiah, right? According to Islam, only Jesus is identified as the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why, what's so, what's special why, about that? Because G Jesus was directly from God. That's God's spirit. Ah, uh, see? Wasn't nobody else God's spirit. God created us from Adam and Eve. We're mm -hmm. the children of Adam. Mm -hmm. The women is the, 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 you know, we're, yeah, the, we're all the yeah, children of yeah. Adam. We descendants of Adam. So Jesus is not a children of Adam. Uh -huh. Jesus is, is the son God. of God. He's, no, he's the spirit of God, literally, that's put in a human. Mm -hmm. So that's why I couldn't nobody touch him. So so now, bro, see this is why <laughs> this is why life was getting so excited talking to you because your your honesty with the text and the scriptures, you understand it's it's real. So when you have, for example, this um this understanding that Jesus is the spirit of God, which the Quran says he's a spirit from him, right? And his word. Directly. Right, directly from him that he sent down to Mary. If we understand this about Jesus, we we understand that he's more than just a human. Yeah. He's more like Adam, just human. Moses, David, Muhammad, all of these dudes, just humans. He was, but, I feel like Jesus wasn't human. Jesus was a spirit in the human flesh. Mm. So that's why it's like when they say they killed him, no, we don't believe that they killed Jesus because how can God, why would God let someone like us kill something he created? Uh, really though. A spirit. Well, we'll see. That that's that's yeah. We'll, we'll get to that because that's a that's a tough one. Yeah. Because, we'll, we'll we'll get to that in a second. The reason why I say that though, right, mm -hmm. is because when you think how powerful God is, right, the Most High, He knows everything. You don't think He knew them Romans wanted to kill unless, Jesus? Unless there was a purpose. But guess what though, right? When he when but what, what Muslims believe is that when they when uh when Jesus was on that cross, yeah, that God took His soul, mm -hmm. His spirit back. Mm -hmm and made a look-alike and he confused the people you know why because people why would somebody try to uh black was try to downsize jesus or make him seem like he's wrong or he's lying right mm -hmm. peace be upon them 
because that's wrong, bro. Because Jesus never did nothing wrong. Them is people in their hearts, ill yeah. intentions. So, so, so here's here's uh -huh. something interesting. And I, I want to get to the crucifixion in just a second. Uh, but the identity of Jesus, his nature, is what we're talking about, right? Being more than human. So you as a Muslim, even you can see that Jesus is more than human. He's, he's, you, you even went to the, to the point where it's like he's not human at all. He's, a, he's the spirit of God that indwelt in a human flesh. This is something that's interesting because if you read, if we open the Bible, bro. We open, man, I'm going to have to keep my phone out, actually. We open the Bible, watch this, dude. Watch this. You're not far from what the gospel teaches, man. So if we go open the Bible and we go to John 1, verse 1. And then the Bible, like I was telling uh, Sean yesterday, mm -hmm. Sean, it's deep. <laughs> Y'all don't like like Zachariah, yeah, and Mary, and John, and all of them mm -hmm. was around before Jesus even came into the picture. Yeah, well, this this is a different John. Just to, just to let you know, this is a different. This is John the Apostle. Oh, John. What Apostle, you're talking okay. about is uh, Yahya the, the yeah, Baptist. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So so look, so this is what it, this is what it says. Look, bro, in the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So everything was created through the word. The word was with God and also identified as God himself. But then watch when we skip down to the 14th verse, it tells us what happened to the word. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the only son of the father, full of grace and truth. So what you're saying, when you say that the spirit of God came in the flesh and walked amongst us, taught us and took on human flesh. Similarly, we have in John, it's, it's, it has that about the word though. It's the word of God, right? That came and took on flesh and walks amongst us, taught us, showed us the grace of God and the mercies of God. It's the word of God that did that. This is why, bro, we say, like the Bible literally teaches us Jesus himself is more than a prophet. He's more than that. He's the word of God, a spirit from God, shares the same nature as God that took on flesh and taught us himself. You're right. You, you're right about that, bro. As a Muslim, you're right about that. Wow. You're not wrong. That's deep. That's deep but that you're saying that as that a Muslim. You know that Jesus was a prophet, but he was the only, and that's, it's okay to believe that Jesus was more, that you, that he was more than a prophet because he was blessed like that. Mm. The way he was, people will really think like that. And it's okay because Jesus was the only person who never sinned. Mm -hmm. The only person, bro, who yeah. never sinned with all of these people trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. Talk bad about him. Talk to him like he lying about it. Yeah. They tried to do him like that. They tried to kill him. Now this, I want, now, now that we're on this, I want, I, I think you'll be amazed by this. Have you ever read the book of Isaiah yet? Have you touched on that yet? Prophet Isaiah no. in the Old Testament? Okay. I know who, I heard of him. Okay, bro. My God. It's a gem. It's a gem impact with uh, prophecies about Jesus, about the Messiah. So I want to show you something, bro, in Isaiah, because we're talking about the crucifixion and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. I want to show you this real quick, okay? So here we have an Isaiah. Man, just, you, you, you special, bro. Uh, I'm not even gonna lie. Appreciate that. You know how many Muslims we talk to, bro, and they like, nah, nah, Jesus is barely, you know, just a human. There ain't nothing really special about him. Like, they really, they demean him like that, bro. I'm telling you, we do all. That's we I told you we gonna have a good talk today. Yeah, uh, if they can't nobody say that about Jesus. They, bro. they do it all the time. Peace be upon him. You have to say peace be upon Jesus' name when you say it, because if you don't, that's like disrespect. That's how real. That's how powerful Jesus was, because mm -hmm. he was directly. Think about it, bro. All of us had parents, father and the mother who had us. Jesus never did. Right. They put a spirit in them. Fire. Come on, bro. Who yeah. you know? What 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 why wouldn't you why wouldn't that be controversy? You know? Yeah. Like yeah. that's for sure off the bat. Special right there. Right. Now now in, in line of you what you're talking about, the crucifixion, right? Uh like why would God like God wouldn't allow this to happen to something 
he holds so dear to him, so special to him, mm -hmm. right? And I basically said, unless he had a purpose of, of allowing it to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have in Isaiah 53, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna give it to you, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you read. Cause I don't, I don't like, to, I don't wanna do the explaining stuff, I'm gonna let you read, and I want you to tell me who it sounds like to you. I'm gonna let you read a little bit. Okay. And then I'm gonna it's, stop you. Let me ask you a question. Is this yeah. the Old Testament? Yeah, yeah, it's the Old Testament. Uh -huh. okay. This is this is 700 years before Jesus is born. Okay. So I read from the first. Yep, yep. You can read from. Who the first has one. believed what he has heard from us, and to whom he has the arm of the Lord had been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, mm -hmm. and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Mm -hmm. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquity. Iniquities. Iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Mm -hmm. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of, of us all. Right, you can pause there. So with this reading, bro, who does that sound like to you? You want to take another look? You can. You can look to at be it. honest, if you, yeah. you really want to be honest, uh, I really... I, you had to guess. Let me see. Yeah. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions. Are you trying? Do you think that's do you believe that Jesus? I, I think that I sound like th that Isaiah was probably predicting Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is 700 years before Jesus is born, bro. And 700 years before Jesus is born, God revealed what's going to happen to the Messiah. That he's going to be despised by his own people, mm. rejected by his own people, mm. that he's not going to come in some magnificent kingly way of glory, but he's coming humbly as a servant. Right. And how they're not going to esteem him. They're not going to think anything much of him. Mm. Right. And then it talks about how he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows and now he was pierced for our transgressions how the lord laid on him the sins of us all this is 700 years before it happens right so when we have this right we have this talking about the messiah that he's going to be pierced for our transgressions bruised and crushed for our sins and that it's god's plan that this happens and he's doing it for us and that's the whole purpose. The whole purpose is because he's holy and he's innocent and he's worthy enough to take on the sins of the world to redeem people like you and me, to redeem his own people, even though they reject him. That's the purpose. <clears throat> so with that, bro, it's like you, you have this narrative and this isn't the only place. Mm -hmm. There's m many places just like this that talk about what's gonna happen to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And God is already telling us this. So when it finally happens in the gospel and we see that the Jews reject him, we see that they lie about him, we see that they give him over to the Romans to be crucified and we see him be crucified and come back and raise from the dead and say, see, I'm alive again. This is, has already been told already. So then when Muhammad comes later and says, oh, wait, no, 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 no. Actually, it didn't really happen. Um, Allah just made it appear like it would happen. Uh, well, look, let me tell you. So, let me ask you a question. Do you know who revealed the Bible to Moses? It's Do God. You know, it's the angels. Angel G Gabriel? No, no, no. Gabriel. God, God spoke to him face to face. To Moses directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't. I, I didn't hear that yeah. one. But I know who revealed the Quran to Muhammad in that cave was the angel Jibril. You know that Muhammad was deaf and dumb. He didn't even know how to read, bro. Well, uh, he didn't know illiterate? Or right, he was illiterate. But the angel said, read. And Once, he couldn't. He couldn't. He said it three, two, said it again, read. He, he said, I can't read. The third time he said it in a way that you that it is it, it like way put fear in him. So he was like, He was fearful the reading. whole time, bro. Mm -hmm. he, that, start, he started reading. That's how the Quran came about. So But do you do you think that if if the angel Gabriel really came to Muhammad? 
that he would be giving a different message than what the prophets were given about the Messiah being the redeemer of our sins, what will happen to him, that God sending his son into the world. If angel, if angel Gabriel, the angel from God, the messenger from God, gives a revelation to the prophet, will it contradict the previous prophets? It shouldn't, no. It shouldn't. It shouldn't, not at all. So right. that's why I wanted to show you some things because when you really talking about this, you have to break it down in science, bro. You have to really be logical about, about certain things or you will confuse yourself and confuse other people. That's a good question. Do you think Jibreel would do that? No. No, the answer is no. He can't. Yeah, you know, exactly. like everything that's written, it is what it is. Exactly. It's no contradicting, no taking it out exactly. because then that'll be us doing it. Exactly. If the word is the word, that's the word. Exactly. That's how I'm standing on that. The exactly. Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the uh, it's only four books, the Quran. Yeah. So I, a Muslim wouldn't be a believer if he didn't believe in the Torah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have to believe in this, you know? So let me just show you, this is uh, the Quran. Surah 19. I don't know if you ever read the Surah yeah. Miriam. Yep. This is Miriam. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is so. I'm gonna go to because I just read some. It's Quran.com. No, this is uh, is uh yeah. This is an app. This is uh, you don't have this app. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I got a different app. Athan app. Oh yeah, I have a different app. Okay, so look, let me read this to you. Because this right here answer a lot of questions, you know. And don't get me wrong, bro. I understand why people like talking about this because the Bible was here way before way, way the Quran. Before. You know, way before. one thing about the Quran, this Arabic, you can't move that. That Hebrew, you mm -hmm. can't move that. You feel me? But that English, you can always move English. English not our, is not our, you know, that's why in order to really read this Quran, you have to learn Arabic. You, you think so? Me? No, you have to. That's not just how it is. But the English is, you know, it, it's a, it'll help you understand it, but it's different when you're reading the Arabic because it's never been tampered with, you know? So let me show you. That's tough. If, if, if that's the case, man. We have to learn this, Because I have, I have some examples where I think that the Quran in the Arabic has been d tampered with a bit. You have to show me. Yeah. Show me a proof or a sign. I got you, brother. Please. I'm going to show you everything I know. I'm going to try to give it to you. <laughs> All right. Let me show you the uh, story of Jesus right here in the Quran. Are you trying to go to where the spirit first comes to her? It's like verses like 16. Start like verse 16, that should be where the spirit comes to her and tells her that she's about to be pregnant. You was, you was right, 16. Mm -hmm. oh, Told you, man, I read this book, right. man. I read the reminder. <laughs> I be reading that reminder, like. <laughs> oh, it say, oh, it say, uh, and mention, oh, Muhammad, in the book, the story of Mary when she withdrew from her family to a place towards the east. And she took in seclusion from them a screen. Then we sent to her our angel and he represented himself to her as a well-proportioned man. Now let's pause here because it doesn't say angel in the Arabic. In the Arabic it says ruh, spirit. So for some reason, I don't know why the English translation, uh, they try to put their interpretations into this, That's but the word, the exactly. You gotta learn the Arabic. You're right. Because ruh, it's nine spirit. times out of 10, it means, it derives from from that. You know? So yeah, so angel is, is like a malik, malika or something like that. Malika. Yeah, or something like malik, that. Yeah. So this is ruh, so it's spirit, not angel. Okay. So I don't know, I, they try to put their, their theology in there, but they shouldn't You talking that. about this, ru, ruhana? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay, so uh, then it said, well proportioned man. So the spirit, the spirit came, not an angel, the spirit came in the form of a, of a well proportioned man. Okay, uh -huh. then she said, indeed, I seek Secret refuge in the most merciful from you. Uh -huh. So leave me if you should be fearing of Allah. He said, I am only the messenger of your Lord to give you news of a pure boy. See, that Man, that's terrible. It don't even say that. It doesn't say to give you news of a pure boy. That's nowhere in the Arabic. In the Arabic it says to give you a pure boy. 
The spirit came down. See, it just say news up right here. Oh, that's oh just, in the, that's just okay. parentheses. Yeah, it's just, okay, English, good. You can't look. That's what I was trying to tell you. You can't really translate Arabic like that. Well, you can. You I think can, but it's it's always gonna be that. That's no, just like Hebrew in. in no, see, no, see, look, they do they do a good job until they add parentheses oh, in there. They, yeah. That's unnecessary. Yeah. So it, it's if, without the parentheses, it simply says. To give you a pure boy. Uh -huh. That's just for like people who don't know the Arabic to understand a little bit better. That's, That's just clear like to me. with Arabic, like with Hebrew, because in, in the Torah, it's Hebrew on this side. I'm pretty sure everything in that Hebrew, it's, it's like, it's gonna, in English, it's gonna change. It's, it's gonna change. Well, it's, it's it's, to. So, so to me, it's pretty clear that the Spirit Himself came down, took on the form of a man, and gave, gave, uh, gave Mary the pure boy. Okay. Not news of, but the spirit himself gave the boy to Mary. Uh -huh. And this right here, I'm, I'm gonna let you tie this and say, it is not befitting for Allah to take a son. Exalted is he. When he decrees an affair, he only says to it be, and it is. You see there, so there it is again. It is not befitting for Allah to take on a son, mm -hmm. to have a son, complete you know, complete objection and rejection okay. to the gospel message that Jesus is the Son of God. Wait, can I say something? Say it, can I say just it. say something? It's really not. You know how? Let me tell you how, brother. Right? Because God didn't have sex with Mary. No one's saying that. But that's to have a child. How he is? We gotta have sex. That's us. That's not God, though. Right. So he says it's not befitting for uh, for him to take a son at all. At all. He it's said not it. Not befitting for mm -hmm. him to take a son at all. Yeah. So he rejects he rejects in any sense that he's a father to Jesus. While Jesus is saying that salvation is based on the son of God coming down into the world and us believing in him, trusting in him for our salvation giving his life for us, redeeming us, or else we're condemned if we do not believe in the name of the Son of God. That's what the gospel teaches. So look, uh, this, this is what, like this type of stuff is pulled out. This is 2 Corinthians, brother. Um, and this is important because the Bible warns us, even Jesus, Paul, the apostles, they warned us about these different teachings that would come up later, that would arise later. And watch how intricate this is, dude, look. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Why? For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus other than the one that we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted. I'm afraid you put up with it readily enough. So they're warning us that there's going to be people, false teachers coming out with a different gospel, with a different Jesus, even from a different spirit. So like if we believe that that spirit in the cave was Angel Gabriel or whatever that spirit was, there's no way that that spirit that Muhammad experienced, if it's from God, would give a different gospel, would give a different Jesus. But that's what we see. <clears throat> Wherever Muhammad got this from, and I do believe he had an experience in that cave, I do. I just don't believe that it was an experience from God because it contradicts the Jesus we know from the gospel. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's huge for me. When I read Moses, I see that Jesus lines up with Moses. When I see Isaiah, I see Isaiah lined up with Moses, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, David. I see all of these guys line up with each other, all the way pointing to the final, the final most important one, the Messiah, Jesus. Let me ask you a question. In the Bible, does it talk about Muhammad coming? No. You sure? Doesn't. I'm positive, brother. And and this is that. Would, if it did, I would have to believe that he's a prophet. You really? You hold on. Let me show you something. Go ahead. We can go through all of it, bro. Oh, no, I know I all think these. I seen something on YouTube, and they said that they talked about Muhammad coming, mm -hmm. bro. Yeah, they, they they think that all the time. I can I can give you all the verses where they say where they think the Muhammad comes. Yeah, I can give I it to you. I never really read it, or I never really said it. All right, so it. so you you got a few places. So well, this really deems from uh, a few verses. If we if we read 
If we look at the first, let's look at the verse in the Quran first that says this, okay? So for the audience that don't know where this comes from, let's go to chapter 7, verse 157. You've been doing your homework. He I told you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'd do this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, but show scripture. Yeah. 137. 7, 157. 157. 7, 157. Mm -hmm. That's, uh... <clears throat> now, this is another reason, bro. This right here is another reason why I reject the Quran. You're going to see in a second. Because it, it makes the claim. It makes the claim that, Mos uh, that Muhammad is found in my scriptures. That when I read my scriptures, I should see Muhammad. I should be able to find his description. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. So, you right. That's what it says. So go ahead. Okay. So you want me to read it? Yep. All uh, right. You said... Uh, 7157. 7157. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, those who follow the message... Bismillah. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written... In what they have of the Torah and the gospel, mm -hmm. who enjoys upon them what is right and forbid them what is wrong and makes lawful for them the good things and prohibits for them the evil and relieves them of their burden and the shackles which were upon them. So yep. they who have believed in him, honored him, supported him and followed the light which was sent down with him. It is those who will be successful. Is that the verse? That's the verse. So you see how in the beginning it said that the unlettered prophet, it would, we will find him in the Torah and the gospel. The unlettered, those who follow the messenger, mm -hmm. the unlettered prophet, mm -hmm. whom, they find, whom they find written what, in what they have of the, the Torah, Torah and, the and the gospel. Yep. So enjoys upon them what is right and forbids them what is wrong and makes lawful for them. So when I open the Torah and the gospel, mm -hmm. I should find the unlettered prophet in there. So I should, is I should the find unlettered him. prophet they're talking about is Muhammad. Is Muhammad? Yeah, the, the illiterate one, right? The one who okay. he can't read and write. The, the unlettered. unlettered. That's, that's what, what unlettered means? Yeah, that's okay. what that means. So I should be able to open up the Torah. Yes. Open up the, the gospel. Yes. And find yes. Muhammad in the scripture. There's another place that says this. And, you sh and guess what, brother? You, you don't. Will. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. We'll Man. see. So look. Go it to, better be. I know. <laughs> it better be. But, if, but look. No, for real. Now, no, now, now here's it the thing. Be. Now, let me ask you this like, real quick. Seriously. Now, I want you to go to chapter 61, verse 6. Go to chapter 61. In the Quran? Yep, yep. All right. Chapter, chapter 61, 61, verse 6. 61, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're, as you're pulling that up. Now, let me. I want to ask you a, a, a critical the thinking ranks. question. Yep. <clears throat> I want to ask you a critical thinking question. Mm -hmm. it, with the Quran says that. Mm -hmm. If it's if I can't find Muhammad mm -hmm. in my scriptures, mm -hmm. then that means that the Quran would be false, right? Well, I'm gonna keep it real, bro. Not ne ne not necessarily impossible. But, but I'm not saying because I can never say that the Quran is false because it changed my life and millions of lives, just like the Bible did. Mm -hmm. But it's you know you might be one of the first person who found the uh, error. <laughs> <laughs> you might go down and, But it's like Have nobody ever proved it Because the Bible is so Thick bro You have to read Every, every line. line He's nowhere in there Every line But look If the if the Quran says He's in the Bible mm -hmm. And if he's not in the Bible Then the Quran is making A false claim But I, what I just read I didn't read that It said he was in the Bible It says in the Torah And the Gospel Okay let's I'm gonna go back to that but Okay Which one did right, you so say Verse 6 Verse 6 and mention when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, indeed I am the messenger of Allah to you, confirming what came before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me. So, whose name is, is Ahmed. Yep. That was Muhammad's name, too. Mm -hmm. So, but that, when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, This is obvious magic. Yeah. So, it literally said that Jesus said that a messenger is going to come after him named Ahmed or Muhammad, whichever one, interchangeable. So that means that in the gospel, I should see Jesus mentioning Ahmed or Muhammad coming. And you say you have it. There's nowhere in there. Not a single word from Jesus mentions the coming of another messenger named Ahmed. Now, I'm going to let you do this now. Go, if you go back to 7157 so you can see it. 7157 so that you can... See it that it's definitely it says that he's in the Torah and the gospel. Okay. Seven one fifty seven. 
I read this crown front and back, bro. You, you, you on it, bro. You, <laughs> on, you, your, you on your dean. Glory, glory be to God, man. Yeah. We got The Bible says to study to show ourselves approved, you know? Gotta study. So. So I never, well, I read it, but uh, it's crazy how you know exactly. That's how I know you searching. You really trying to figure it yeah. out. That's good, yeah. bro. Yeah, I'm telling you, we take it, I take it serious. Nobody ever stop you, bro, because you got to take it serious. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? exactly. Don't ever doubt the word, but look, what you say, 157, right? So 157, right? right? Right in the beginning of it. 157, uh, right here. Those who follow the messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find written where in what they have of the Torah and the gospel Boom. who enjoys upon them what is right, right. and wrong mm -hmm. but okay that's it though okay so let me all right so that's, if you that's want, a good point yeah. so if you want now go ahead and look. pull up yep look, pull it up they're gonna you're gonna find articles that give you different verses okay. and I'm gonna show you how in none of those verses talks about Muhammad Okay. So it, it, in the Quran it said Ahmed, right? Yep, it said Ahmed. Okay. I can tell you what they, what's, what's going to come up. What you might see is Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 16. What you might see is John, chapter 14, 15, and 16, talk about the spirit of truth coming. Uh, what you might see is Deuteronomy 18, the prophet like Moses. You'll see these verses. It's this imam called Mufti Mink. You ever heard of him? Yep. Mufti Mink. I heard of him. He just came out with his own translation of the the Quran. For real? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It says that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesied in the bottle in the Bible in the book of Deuteronomy. See, I told you the Deuteronomy 18. Is right. That, yeah, that, yeah. Now that's the Old Testament. That's 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 the Torah. It's all the same, though, brother. Well, I have no problem because it says it's all the they same. should find him rich in the Torah. Did you find, it, did you find right? that one? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so did you see his name in the Deuteronomy? It's not. It's not there. But the, what they're saying is, is that he's his he's mentioned like his his description is there. Was the description mentioned to you? No, it's not. What, what, what was what, that? Let's go to that. Okay, let's go to that. So it's Deuteronomy eighteen. Yeah. Okay. Verses fifteen to eighteen. A prophet with the Lord thy God raised up unto thee from the midst of the of thy brethren like unto me until him ye shall hearken all right pause because that's a lot of that's king that's tough king james so <laughs> did, did you understand what it said because that's why i don't read it because i don't speak that english but let me just read it in a little clear okay so <laughs> it, it says uh, <laughs> it says uh, well, you, lord, can, you can use mine you the lord use. the lord your god <laughs> So this is both different translations. Yes, yes. As so that's, see, that's old English. That's like our modern day English kind of, you know. All right. The Lord, your God, will raise up for you a prophet like me among you from your brothers. <coughs> it is to him you shall listen. All right. So pause. So it says that the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me. So this is Moses talking mm -hmm. about what God said to him. Like me from among you from among your brothers. So he's talking to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. So the prophet that's gonna be raised up is an Israelite. Mm -hmm. So that's not Muhammad, Muhammad's an Ishmaelite, according to, to what they say. They say he's, in, he's from Ishmael, not Israel, right? So the prophet that's being raised up, like Moses, is supposed to be an Israelite prophet. So that automatically gets rid of Moses. Uh, I'm sorry, gets rid of Muhammad, you know? But you can, you can, we can keep reading it because that's what they that's what they try to do. They try what they try to say. Just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb mm -hmm. on the day of assembly, mm -hmm. when you said, "Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die," mm -hmm. and the Lord said to me, "They are right in what they have spoken. Mm -hmm. I will raise up for them a prophet like you." from among their brothers and I will put my words in his mouth mm -hmm. and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Yeah. <clears throat> so you see? And oh. whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. Exactly. All right, that's it. So you see how it's supposed to be from Israel. The prophet like Moses is going to be raised up in Israel. He's going to be an Israelite. So when they say that that's about Muhammad, 
It's a lie. You 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 can't see that that that's that's talking about Muhammad. There's no way, shape, or form. He's not an Israelite. It's, that's one of the requirements. He has to be an Israelite. Mm. You know, has I to never, be. I never. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So what do you mean is Muhammad mentioned in the Bible? You see a bunch of this stuff come up. Jesus speaks about Muhammad. All right, boom. There we go. Let's get. Now we're getting somewhere. Now yeah. we gotta get somewhere with this. So, that question was a critical question. If Jesus, if Muhammad's name wasn't in the Bible, do you think the Quran is real? Correct. Or do you think it's, it's, it's a lie? Yeah, exactly. So my answer is, I don't think it's a lie. So we have to figure this out. Exactly. Because. Man, bro, you would be probably the first person in history <laughs> I'm to not, find a fault. But I'm not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm only, many people before me have brought this out. And I know Muslims, I know I know people who was born Muslims who didn't came to Christianity, bro. I'm going to keep yeah. it real with you. And yeah. they be trying to tell me, and I'm like, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to, you feel me, to this thing. But I'm doing a lot, bro, because we all together, bro, at the end of the day, bro. We all... From God we was created to God we return, bro. We all brothers, bro. No matter what, bro. Yeah, we brothers in humanity for we sure. We brothers, bro. That's how I'm, I'm standing on that. Yeah. Christian, Muslim, if you a real. I, I want you to become a brother in my faith, man. Because that's what's important. It's life or death with us right now. You know what I'm saying? Jesus predicts Muhammad. The arrival of Muhammad. I know y'all gotta go soon. Are we chilling? Arrival, oh, he does. Oh, dang. Okay. We gotta do this again, bro. I'm, 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 we could go to I'm, the mosque, bro. Yes, that's what we want. Yeah, we could, to, bro, we could, bro, we could do this. Muslims are concerned. Whatever is mentioned in the Old Testament, he's really not. they have to believe I'm telling because you. that is part of the scheme. That's part of the Bible. I'm telling you. And Allah says, uh, bro, all of these people that you think is sharp, I'm gonna show you that they're that they're deceivers. Okay. And they don't know nothing. I'm gonna, I promise you, I, 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 I'm giving you my word. Yeah. Right? Have I shown you anything that was wrong yet so far? I guarantee you, everything that these people bring up, I'm going to show you how it destroys them. Everything. I promise you. Right. Lord is my witness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, who is this dude? <laughs> uh, they call me Shake Logic, bro. Shake Logic. Shake Logic. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Shake Logic. <laughs> I shall pray to my father to send you a comforter who shall abide with you forever. See that comforter talk again. It's mentioned the Same gospel thing moved to me to talk about. 15 verse number 26. 15, and when the comforter will come, who my father will send, he will glorify me. He misquoted that verse, but it's no worries. It's mentioned the gospel of John, John chapter, chapter 16, 16, verse, verse number 7. seven. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter shall not come. For if I depart, shall I send him. So those are the verses. I told you, when they talk about Jesus, it's talking about Muhammad coming, they quote John chapter 14, 15, and 16. And so these are the verses that we just saw. Now, let's talk, you wanna take a look at it real quick? We got time. So this is it, bro. We'll, we'll, we'll work, we'll work, uh, we'll start with the first one that he mentioned. John chapter 14, verse 16. Now it's funny that they stop at 16. Now you gotta read in context. Or else you just, you, this is a terrible interpretation. It's not how you read the Bible. So, John chapter 14. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 16, that's what they're talking about. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Uh, the other word is counselor or comforter, what they're talking about. To be with you forever. Now, verse 16. The comforter is going to be is gonna come, and he's going to be with them forever this ain't no human prophet now one number one jesus is talking to his disciples so according to jesus the comforter is going to come and be with his disciples who do you believe that is it's the holy spirit jesus tells us later it's the holy spirit so look right here verse 17 even the spirit of truth the spirit the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Talk to the disciples and for the rest of the believers. So the comforter to come is the spirit of truth. 
And you remember when we was reading the Quran earlier, you said that it was a misinterpretation with a word. Yeah, the angel. Yeah, what they and, said that they put it. It's, it's a, the spirit. So, mm -hmm. the spirit of God said that they. Who was that spirit in the Quran that it said? Who was it? That? It doesn't say who it is. So that's the that's the Quran. I mean, that's the Bible saying something about another spirit. Well, this is the this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, right? So look, look. So if we go down, Jesus tells us right here in verse number twenty six, right? So verse twenty six it says, "But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring to you your bring to your remembrance." All that I have said to you. So it's so, not a prophet. So who, hold on. So who is that? That's God. That's the very own, the Spirit of God, brother. Who he coming in through? No, he's he's just coming as through the Spirit. Who? So so you don't believe that's the Prophet Muhammad? No, it's not. He's not the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> that sound like the Prophet Muhammad. How? He's not the Holy Spirit. But he said. So if Jesus is saying this, he said he will come to you in truth. He's, yeah. And Prophet Muhammad, bring, he said that the Quran is the truth. Wait, wait, stop. So let's uh, let's really think about this. Okay. So let's think about the attributes. Number one, he's the Holy Spirit. Yes. In the Quran, Muhammad is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came and helped uh, Jesus, according to the Quran, and stuff uh, like that, uh, and stuff like this. Okay. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit, is the very Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of God, not a human. It's the spirit of God that comes and gives messages and revelations and, you know, exactly. uh, power to do miracles and stuff like that. Okay. Exactly. So it's not Muhammad. Okay. Okay. That's number one. Number two, the Holy Spirit comes to the disciples. Muhammad came 600 years after the disciples. It cannot be about Muhammad. Oh, so you're talking about, he's not talking about the future he's talking about right now he's talking about it sound like he said the future he's talking about it's both it's okay. it's presently and future so presently he's talking to the immediate audience which is the disciples he's telling what's going to yeah. happen what's going to happen and guess what they're included in what's going to happen mm -hmm. so they're not exempt it's not like oh i'm telling you about this holy spirit that's going to come y'all not going to experience him no he says he's going to come to you mm -hmm. he's going to come to you and to the believers that come through your word when y'all spread the gospel around, other people are also going to receive the Holy Spirit, right? But so the Holy Spirit comes to the disciples first. Muhammad never came to the disciples. He came 600 years after. Uh, Muhammad, you know, the Quran came 1400 years ago. Yeah. So, so it, it's impossible to be about Muhammad. But guess what? It's not. You know what I'm saying? How? Because it's the power. Well, I feel like it's not because the, <laughs> just think about it, bro. Like if, if if I or I'm pretty sure Moses, peace may Allah be may God be pleased with them, mm. predicted Jesus. Yes. So if Moses predicted Jesus, Abraham predicted another prophet. Well, he didn't. And or whoever. So if, if Moses predicted Jesus, yeah. why would Jesus not predict Muhammad? Because Muhammad's not a true prophet. That's the point. There if Muhammad is, is if Muhammad is a true prophet, mm -hmm. then maybe Jesus might have talked about him or something like that um or a true message nowhere he said but, no but name or nothing in nowhere. the bible at all no, no. not even the, uh uh of, of logic this may this this can be the prophet muhammad from what he's uh speaking well, through the quran but well, that's what we're saying if we're let's, let's take the name out of it i'm a, look this is how generous generous i am even though the Quran says Jesus mentions him by name, mm -hmm. I know that Jesus doesn't mention him by name in the gospel. But I'm willing mm -hmm. to be like, you know what? Give me descriptions. If Jesus even mentions the likeness of Muhammad, that he, like in the context, he's talking about him, even though it's not by name, I'll accept that. Because there's prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament that doesn't mention him by name. It doesn't, right? But it describes him. It tells us what he's going to do and the stuff he's going to fulfill. And Jesus does that, right? Born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin, stuff like this, yada, yada, yada. And Jesus fulfills those. I'm like, okay, boom. So we should have where Jesus at least describes Muhammad. Mm -hmm. But we don't. They go here. I told, just showed you. Mufti Mink and Zakir Naik was quoting the verses I told you they was going to quote. And when we look at this, they don't describe Muhammad. It don't say comforter or nothing. Well, no, it does. Like, look, so the word in the Greek is parakletos, which they translate as comforter or helper or counselor. So well, comforter. See how I look at the comforter that? Comforter is the Holy that's Spirit. That's my sign right there that, that was, they was talking about Muhammad. That's just Who, my how? logic. Well, how? Because if it says comforter, 
That's what Jesus said in the uh, Bible or in the Quran. No, it doesn't say. No, not in the Quran. I mean, in the Bible, he says that. Yeah, he in, said the, the, in the Bible, the he says comforter. the comforter. So, and then in the Quran, it says Ahmed. Which doesn't mean comforter. Or the comforter. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean comforter. Comforter. It means the praised one. The praised one, yeah. So that's that's two different meanings. Yeah. You know? So you believe Prophet Muhammad is a false prophet? Yes. And these are reasons why. Because he brings this Quran, this message, saying, if you guys go into your scriptures, you'll find me. If you go into your scriptures, my research. You feel that. me? Yeah. If you go so here's two things, and we we can leave it leave it at this. Two things, bro. One is that this is the reason why I believe that Muhammad is a false prophet. One is that his message is a different message than the previous prophets. He, Jesus teaches, as we saw, that salvation comes from the Son of God. God sending his Son into the world, that's how we're redeemed, right? If you don't believe in the name of the Son, you're condemned already. That's what Jesus said. Remember the first verse I showed you in the Bible. But in the Quran, we saw multiple verses. Those who say that Jesus is the Son of God are disbelievers. They're blasphemers. God is against them. Um, mm. It's not befitting for Allah to take to himself a son. That's right? Mm. So that's a completely different message than what I find in the gospel. That's number one. Number two, Muhammad claims that we would find him in our scriptures. And we don't. So if we don't, then Let it's false. Let me ask you a question. Luke, you, you read the whole Bible. So yeah. Luke... 16 through 19. Mm -hmm. I was reading the uh, verse to, to Ak right here yesterday. Yeah. How to get eternal life? Yes. Yeah. And Jesus, a man came up to Jesus. And I want your understanding of this. Sure. You know, because it all boils down to logic, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, yeah. and understand it. You know, yep. and this is in the Bible, bro. This is what Jesus, peace be upon him, said. He said, this man <coughs> said, how can I get into uh, eternal, you know, life? Yeah. He said, why are you asking me? I'm not, uh, you know, that's what was that verse? What was so, that? Can so you go says, to the brown yeah, one? Yeah, 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 I got you. And the, and the ruler came, asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, that's not a denial of him being good. It's not. No, no, I'm right? not saying that. Okay. I, I, no, I know Jesus is good. Okay, good. Jesus good. was the only sinless exactly. person. He listen to perfect. what I'm saying. But listen to his answer. Yeah. It's, so, it's a provoking question, a thought-provoking question. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So, if, he, so if you're calling me good, you do, you, you, do you know what you're saying? If you're calling me good, do you know what you're saying about me? And are you willing to accept what you're saying about me? Because if you're saying that I'm good in this context, then you're understanding that I'm God. Are you ready for that? It don't, let me see. Keep reading it. So why do you it call don't me say good? That, though. But look, why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Mm -hmm. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your mother and father. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. That's, when, why, he was, that's why he was sinless. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus, uh, when Jesus heard this, he said to him, one thing you still lack. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So there's one thing that he lacks in order to get eternal life is giving up his possessions and following Jesus. <laughs> so Jesus is putting Why himself on that pedestal. Accept no, he not. No, he not, bro. So Come then, why, on, bro. why think he, about that? Bro. Why is he telling them to follow him if he's not putting him on, himself on that pedestal? Uh, that's just that's a good question to ask, you know. But I'm reading. I'm going off of the scripture. Yeah, the if, scripture. If the guy says, "Good teacher," why? What he said, "Good teacher." Why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Only the only good is God alone. So Jesus taking himself off a pedestal. No, he's not. He's he's saying do because he like he put God on that pedestal. So look, it's it's like this, bro. Don't praise me, praise God. But that's not what he said. That's not what he does. He doesn't say don't. He doesn't say don't call me good. He doesn't say don't call me good. Why do you? Why do you call me good? It's a thought provoking question, bro. No, there's that's no the denial. Question. Basically, you said he's just he's. It's a question like why do you say this? Yes, and, and but but not just a like a like he's really wondering. It's a thought. Jesus asked questions. Look, a lot of times Jesus asked questions to get people to think. He did that all the time. 
This is no exception. He's doing the same thing. Why do you call me good? Yeah, yeah. There's none good but God alone. Do you know what you're saying? So let me ask you something. Just think about this, bro. Be logical right now. Okay. You just said this. There's no, he asked Jesus, uh, Jesus said this, and he said, why do you call me good? There's no good. There's none good but God alone. So if he's so is that Jesus calling himself God? Yeah, exactly. How? Because he's good. He's perfect. Why? But why would some? Why would a human say? That's like you telling me this, right? You just imagine you Jesus right now, mm -hmm. and I'm like Jesus. How can I? And you like? Why do you call me good? There's no good but God alone. I would be confused. So I thought you were God. No, no. So because he's not. He's not. He doesn't have that <laughs> I understanding. You were God, though. But he doesn't have that understanding. <laughs> the rich ruler doesn't have that understanding yet. Okay. He don't okay. he don't have that understanding. Now here's another thing. When it comes to when it comes to um, he, he laid down the law, the Ten Commandments. He's, Jesus is telling them to follow the Ten Commandments. But then he says, There's one thing you lack. Sell all your possessions and then come follow me. Why is Jesus saying that that's something that he lacks? What what part of the Ten Commandments is the young ruler uh, missing by Loving his possessions and not following Jesus. Mm. I can tell you. There's a second one. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not have idols, meaning things that you put before God, things that you love before God. This man loved his possessions more than he loved God. This is why Jesus told him there's one thing you lack. Out of the Ten Commandments, there's one thing you lack. You love your possessions. And you don't love me. But go and sell your possessions and then come follow me. Now let me just think about it, brother. Just because Jesus said that doesn't mean he's saying he's God. He already said, bro, only God is good. Just think about it logically, brother. When somebody say, come follow me, come follow me, bro. That's like, come walk with me. That's not saying, no, come believe. It's, it's, for inter it's for eternal life, man. Look, a so, a look lot, but so look, that's like following. Think about it, bro. That's like how we follow the ways of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We pray five times Does a Muhammad day. Does Muhammad give you eternal life? No, God gives us okay, eternal so watch, life. Okay, so watch this. Watch what Jesus says. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got Logics. you. Logics. That's so, no mean that you saying, come follow me doesn't mean like you so, know so watch what Jesus says he already here. said he God bro. watch he what Jesus God. says bro watch look 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 he says this <clears throat> uh they asked I love this too bro by yeah, the way good. keep it real because it's like <laughs> bro because bro I'm a you know what I mean I was a Christian bro mm -hmm. straight up bro I got baptized and everything but I took my shahada after bro so, that, so uh, I really take heed to this type of stuff, yeah. bro. I love these conversations. It's not no I, I, debate or nothing, right, bro. Right, right. It's, it's we, real we life, deep, bro. It's yeah. deep, bro. It's, I don't take this as no debate. So watch what Jesus says, bro. So verse 24, the, 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 the Jews are asking. They say, so the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, then tell us plainly. Tell us straight up. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name bear witness about me. But you do not believe me because you are not among my sheep. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. What does this mean? They follow me, right? His sheep follow him. What does that mean? I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. That's deep, bro. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. Here's the kicker. Can I? Because, because that's this God, is shirt. Hold on, look. No, it's not shirt. It's not shirt. Right. Let me tell you why. Because when you think about it, Jesus is the Spirit of God. So everything that Jesus said came directly from the Most High. So bro. Jesus speaking is God speaking. Yes, bro. Because He's God. No, He's he, the Spirit. Which means that He's God. He, if He's the Spirit of God, he's bro. Spirit. He's a. He's like a basically. Is your is your spirit not you? Yeah, exactly. He's, so the he's spirit, a prophet, of, though, but you know? the spirit of God is God, man. Your spirit is you. The spirit of God is God. Mm -hmm. So if Jesus is the spirit of God, then Jesus is God. 
That's why, bro. That's why he okay, can say. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. Well, listen, Jesus, listen. God, who wrote the who wrote the Old Testament? So, so God, Jesus he, wrote the Old Testament. No, God gave. God, Jesus gave the revelation of the Old Testament. Wait, that's Jesus back then, man. No, that's not. Yes, the, the, Jesus didn't reveal the Old Testament. I'm telling you, bro. I, Jesus I got, revealed the Old Testament. Jesus revealed the, the law. Jesus was there. You're I, telling me Jesus revealed Jesus. I'm telling you, look, remember, when I when I showed you how Jesus is the Word, who was oh, there in the that. beginning. I'm gonna show I can't you. Believe that. I'm gonna show, show me, you. Bro. I'm gonna show Jesus you. Jesus did not. Look, Jesus it's, it's, revealed the New Testament, bro. Look, look, I got you. Look, it's three. It's three oh nine. We here for a few more days. This is crazy, bro. <laughs> nah, we nah. look. Well, I'm gonna show you it all. In ten minutes. Nah, nah. We got. We got to. Yeah, gotta, we got to. We got to sit down now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're here to the twenty seventh, so we definitely pick out another day. And um, you got a computer? Yeah. Yeah, we we can go online. We do it online too. Okay, but so we, defi this, we definitely gonna yeah, link up with you. Link up with me. Bro. So look, so look. This, I want I want to say this to say I wanted to end with this, bro. Remember, uh -huh. the follow me where Jesus says follow me. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I give them eternal life, bro. I do that. Not just follow me my ways and my no. If you, you follow me, I give you eternal life. I, I, I see that. I see what you were saying when you read that. You mm -hmm. basically was trying to say that Jesus is giving, Jesus is doing God's duty. That's yes. why you're saying it like that. Exactly. <clears throat> what, what, what I conceive of that is Jesus, bro, is he's special. You know what I'm saying? I will never. Bro, well, how special? No you, me, you can't be so special look, that look, you look. can say you give eternal life. A real life. believer uh -huh. will never a real believer would never disrespect Jesus or no prophets. You know, who are you to say the prophet Muhammad was a false prophet? When Scripture. nobody in the Quran ever disrespected Jesus at all. Well, I Peace was be upon him. So there's no one. So this this you can't be a Muslim if you disrespect Jesus, bro. So, so how can you say that the prophet Muhammad is a false prophet? Because look, let me tell you why. And and this is this is what's interesting about this, okay? Um one when I read the scriptures and I and I judge by the gospel, this is what the Quran says in chapter 5, verse 47. It says, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed in it. And whoever doesn't judge by what Allah has revealed in the gospel, I'm talking about my people, then we're among the wrongdoers. So I have to judge according to my gospel. And when I look at Muhammad and I line him up with the gospel, I have to judge that he's a false prophet because he teaches a different Jesus, a different message that contradicts what the gospel says. You know, so it's not me coming at him and like, oh, I just hate Muhammad or, you know, I just dislike him or da 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 da. I'm looking at what my gospel says. I'm looking at what Muhammad says. And it's based off of that, I have to, I conclude that he's a false prophet. Not to any disrespect to him or anyone who believes in him. It's just the conclusion. You know, and and here's another thing, a layer with so this. So you don't believe in the Quran being the final revelation. I don't. Believe, yeah, I don't. So you don't believe that that's the last book of God. I don't. And here's the reason why: one, it gives us a different message, and two, it makes claims that I have found to be false, like Muhammad being in the scriptures. Because these things, because of those two things, I gotta I gotta do some research and get mm -hmm. back at you on that. For sure, and I, I want to do it with you. Yeah. Like I, I will. Because I'm promise you, bro. Your mind, your brain go change, bro, because you on the right track. Don't ever get me wrong, but, bro, you can't never doubt God's words. I don't got, don't. It, but you are because you're saying that the Quran is false and that the Prophet Muhammad is false. So that so means, You ever heard of the Euphrates River? Yeah. So you know that's in the Bible, right? Yeah. Do you know that the Prophet Muhammad predicted that that well would dry up and that'll be the final last hour? But that's already been told about in the scriptures already. But the Prophet Muhammad here to re re reveal everything but it, he's only just copying it you know what i'm saying the, the, the scripture the already is basically the uh the uh final revelation but if it look if a final revelation is giving us a revelation not something that's already been revealed so muhammad coming and saying hey guys you know god said that the euphrates river is going to be dried up i'm like yeah i know uh, it says, it, it that says in, the in the bible already okay. you know that's not a new revelation for me mm. you know what i'm saying so when my, my thing is, is when he says things that are not true, that are not in the Bible, and that not just not, that is not in the Bible, but that it contradicts what the Bible says. That's my that's my issue with him. OK, so those are the things. Different Jesus, different gospel message. Right. And he says false things like he's he's mentioned in the scriptures. If he's not mentioned in the scriptures and he has a different message, then he's not a true prophet.
Okay. All right, man.